Hello and welcome again to another one Identity Manager video. In this video, we will talk about the API in Identity Manager again. Especially here, I like to talk with you about the database structure in relation to the One Identity Manager API. I had some conversations with some friends and they told me that it is always good to use the API and they're happy with that. But for a lot of beginners and sometimes for some others, it is a little bit complicated to see the relation between the database and the API. Because of that, this time I like to show you the person and the ADS account objects. I like to talk as well about the relations in the database. And last but not least, I want to show you how you can use the API to address properties, objects, and object classes as you need them for your daily business. Thank you for watching and have fun with that video. In a lot of the other lectures we have seen around scripting, in this specific tutorial, I want to take care a little bit more on single objects. As we can see, I'm in the ADS account table. And in the ADS account table, I select just one record. Very typical for the database model, as you know, is that this record comes with a primary key. This primary key in Identity Manager, it's always named like the complete table, the table it's named ADS account, plus a prefix that says UID underscore. And every time we see something like that, that means the table name it's ADS account, the column name it's UID underscore ADS account. This must be the primary key. In some very seldom circumstances, it could be something other else, but typically this is the case. If you want to be sure that I'm telling the truth, you can just open this column here, step to the metadata section, and in the metadata section, there is a flag that says is PK, which is primary key, and you can see it is true, and with that, I know I'm on the right path. This is my primary key. The primary key exists typically twice in our data model. First as standard key, here it is, UID ADS account. And for searching operations, there is another column that includes as well the data class. And this property, it's named X object key. So here is an X object key, the primary key it's included, here it is. And it comes together with the object class name, ADS account. That helps me at the end to identify out of a bunch of object keys, easy, the standard table plus the primary key of the object I like to talk about. Now let's take these two properties to identify and load objects. Therefore, I go back into my script studio. And first thing we do, we create a single object, dbad account. It's an I entity and the I entity with the help of session source gets bound to the ADS account table and generates automatically an ADS account object. In a second step, I assign one of these object UIDs just to a specific text label. And now I use this information to load exactly this object. Therefore, I assign to the dbad account object with the help of session source from the ADS account table a specific object with that specific UID. That means session source get table name plus primary key returns the object which is defined by the primary key. Another way to do that is to use instead of the get which throws an error if the object could not be loaded. For example, because the object UID is wrong, it's the way to use a try get. You can see the try get over here. Tryget works a little bit different than the get itself. For the tryget, I have to define a query for Active Directory account. I have to tell the query how many properties I like to load. I like to load all of them and which object I like to load. Typically, the SQL in the, in the where clause gets written with the help of SQL formatters. You will see that in another video, but to make it easy for you here in this place, I always use plain text SQL for Microsoft SQL. Here you can see that UID ADS account equals a parameter. The parameter is my UID from the top. The query gets then written into the try get. During the load operations, I want to load it interactively. That means to do everything with that object, insert, update, delete, property change, whatever. And last but not least, and this is a specialty of any of these try gets, um, I have to add the variable name where I want to return the object to as last parameter into that specific try get. You can see that here. So that means session source try get with the help of this query 
loads a fully interactive object and it loads it to the variable dbad account as you can see it here. The good message here is that this try get is doing two things. First of all, it returns a true or false for a loaded object. That means for a loaded object, the true for a ob we was not able to load a false. And so I can handle this. Second thing is try get will not throw an error if, for example, a defined object could not be loaded. Yeah, remember, if I change the UID over here, the UID will not fit to any of these Active Directory account objects. And what will happen in this statement here, I will get an error message, but with the try get, I will not get an error message. I only will get a false for a not loaded object like it is written into this specific clause here. Last but not least, there is another one that allows me to load these objects directly with the help of an XObject key. You can see that here. I define an XObject key, but you can see here, which is a text string. I assign this text string to an X object key object, that is the second line. And then I use session source get with the help of this X object key to get my object. What you can see here is as well, it's the session source get. It's here used with an X object key. And over here, it is used with a completely different parametrization. And that is what we call typically to overload functions. And if you are interested in the full blown feature set, you can just right click, for example, on the get, say go to definition, and then you will see that for the get function here are many overloads defined. That means you can use this amount of get functions with different parametrizations. You can see the same, by the way, typing the stuff into your uh, Visual Studio because the IntelliSense will show you that as a drop-down function explanation.